Hey, it's been a few days, hasn't it? So, uh, I'm gonna kind of catch up on what I've missed over the past few days, you know, both series that, that have been going on and, uh, oh yeah, some, some stuff in uh, the head coaching searches. So, and no, I did not have a paper script, but kind of have, sort of have bullet points ready in my head. So anyway, here we go. First off, what what series should I do first? Uh, Suns Clippers. So even without Kawhi, the Clippers continue to scratch and claw, but Phoenix is still up 3-2 in the series. Of course, we know what happened uh, last time the team was up 3-2 on the Clippers. The only difference is this time the Suns were also up 3-1, so my goodness. Remember that interview where Chris Paul said, I don't want to talk about 3-1, I don't have good experiences? My goodness, what if that happens again? Like, it, the funny part is, you know, you have, you know, Terrence Mann and Reggie Jackson, you know, who are, you know, one's been kind of a borderline starter throughout his career ever since he left OKC. The other one has kind of been, you know, developing in the wings, but hasn't really gotten much playtime until this year. But, you know, I'll just think about it, you know, what works so well with them is they're both very quick guards. So, you know, even in a playoff setting, they can get out in transition, you know, especially with that small lineup that Ty Lue's been running. Uh, it helps they've been hitting their threes. And I mean, you know, more so Terrence Mann than Reggie Jackson, but even Reggie Jackson plays good defense, but you can rely on both of them to give you something on defense, you know? Especially, again, especially Terrence Mann. You know, he's he's been taking on some of those challenges in these playoffs, you know, in the absence of Kawhi. Now, that, that being said, it's still an uphill climb from here, you know, being... I don't know if I already covered Game 3 yet. I may have, but I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. You know, Game 4 was just, it was a slugfest. And what do you know? That that was more to Chris Paul's pace than these Clippers. You know? Then Game you know, game 5, again, I didn't really watch the game, so I don't remember exactly how it went. But, I, but I'm pretty sure at some point, just like in game three, you know, the Clippers went on a run and that was all she wrote. Bucks Hawks series. We just finished game four and the series summary so far. Injuries suck. You know, Hawks went in a game with Trey Young out, and from what everyone was saying, it's like the Bucks came out with the attitude of, oh, we're well, Trey Young's out for them, we're just gonna win this. And the Bucks were like, <laughs> nah, fam. Nice try. You know, the, so now the series is knotted at two apiece. And how do I think it's going to go from here? Well, if the Bucks are going to have a chance, P.J. Tucker's going to have to be, like, you know, the instigator. He, I mean, an easy target for him to try to start something, get the Bucks riled up is John Collins, because John Collins gets riled up at everything. <laughs> but anyway, you know, obviously... Don't do anything to get you like a flagrant two, you know, I mean, attack or a flagrant one, you know, he'll, they'll sit him for a few minutes, but you know, he'll be back in. But yeah, the, the Hawks just came out with all the intensity and, you know, their shooters were hitting their shots in game four, you know, and once Giannis went down, that, that was all she wrote for that game, which... It's funny, I, in a group chat, I said, you know, Trey Young's out, RIP the Hawks' chances. Watch this turns into a cold tick. It, it's like, how did I know in saying that that I destined it to be a cold tick? <laughs> I, it, it's just, it's the funniest thing. You know, you can, I mean, but like I said in the points coming into the series, I trust Nate more than I trust Budenholzer in the playoffs. But anyway, so that was the two series. Head coaching searches. Let's see. 
For one, uh, to correct the previous video, I'd said that I'd said in a previous video that Chauncey Bills had been hired in by the Blazers when at the time he hadn't. Now it is official. So, I mean, I'm not going to say I spoke that into existence because it had been said for like a week straight that he was the front runner. You know, there, there's all this stuff with Damian Lillard. You know, does he want out? Does he want to stay in? I think he's, I think he's just play, playing the strings of the media and, and you know, Woj and uh, Stephen A. Smith and all of them to get leverage over what's the name of the general manager of the Blazers, Oshi or something like that. But yeah, I don't think he really wants that. I think he just wants to force their hand. I think that's also what Zion's doing right now. Although they're gonna, on an unrelated note, but they're gonna try. Although speaking of the Pelicans and their coaching search, uh, Jacques Vaughn withdraws his name for, you know, family and personal reasons, you know, and I hope, you know, whatever the situation is there, you know, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's anything too serious, but if there is anything serious, you know, honestly, I wish him the best. I, you know, I hope it uh, gets resolved well. That being said, I am very glad that pretty much leaves Charles Lee as the higher this, I mean, this is the man they should have hired last offseason instead of Stan Van Gundy. Thank you so much, J.J. Redick. But, yeah. And then the last, yeah, Charles Lee kind of fits the timeline of the team or even though it is probably going to, the timeline is probably going to accelerate itself a little this offseason. But I guess we'll see. And then... What was the last one? Oh yeah, Orlando possibly hiring. Uh, what's his name? Oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue. The former Nets head coach. Ah, the, this is the risk of doing things live with no script. Uh, oh my goodness, I feel stupid right now. I remembered it before I started recording too. Uh, Atkinson, Kenny Atkinson. Yeah. His name has come up in Orlando's coaching search, you know. I mean, Orlando and Steve Clifford, like, the word was, when they said mutually parting ways, it wasn't, you know, to avoid a firing. No, it was a genuine mutual parting of ways, which I'm not surprised, you know. Clifford wants to be a part of a win-now team, you know, that that kind of fits how he coaches. Uh, Orlando's moving in a rebuild direction, you know, so... Atkinson, on the other hand, he could, I mean, he's already taken the, probably one of the most daunting rebuilds ever. He, you know, he's coached under that, you know, the, oh my God, I'm forgetting the name of the Nets GM. I'll just put it in the comments, you know, put, you know, found those diamonds in the rough and Atkinson, you know, implemented a system and a structure to, help get things going off the ground. I mean, they pretty much had to build that thing from scratch, you know, finding guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, you know. They, uh, like, taking a chance on, oh, what's his name? He, Levert. You know, trade, trading for D'Angelo Russell when his value was low. And, you know, we see where he is now. But, uh, yeah, they're... Uh, yeah, Kenny Atkinson, you know, good coach for you know a young rebuilding team like Orlando's about to be. I mean, you know, you get Jonathan Isaac coming back off of an ACL injury. They can, you know, work him back into the lineup. Uh, you know, depending on who they draft, you know, maybe they stick at five and eight. Maybe they trade up. I'm a, I'm a fan of the idea of them trading up to the number three pick using picks five and eight to go get Jalen Green. You know, because some people, if they stay put, will try to be like, oh, they should take like Davion Mitchell. But I mean, they already have like Cole Anthony, even at, I'm not sure what the stats are. I'd have to imagine it wasn't the 
on the best efficiency, but you know, he, he showed per, he showed some good signs, you know, before I think he dealt with some injuries throughout the season. And then who else? Mark Health Bolts that you know on this timeline, Mark Health Bolts will finally get the proper time to, you know, be able to develop himself. He'll be in a, in a situation in Orlando where uh He's not going to have all the pressure on him that he had in Philly. And maybe we'll get to see a Fultz resurgence as like, you know, a properly good sixth man. Or who knows, maybe Cole Anthony will turn it out to be the sixth man and Fultz the starter. But I think it's more likely that Fultz would be the sixth man type. But yeah. Also, whenever I was looking at the roster, I... And thinking of Mobama's development, I completely forgot that in the Vucevic trade, they acquired uh, Wendell Carter. So that'll be some, that'll be something to monitor. Also, Otto Porter, you know, can round out the starting lineup, and they can see how Jonathan Isaac works at the four whenever they feel he's ready to come back. It, I mean, they're not going to win a lot of games. Don't don't get it twisted. They're they're not going to win a lot of games. But, I mean, it'll probably be some fun to watch. Now, if they stick at 5 and 8, that'll be, that'll be a little more interesting uh, for the simple fact that the best players at number 5 presumably are going to be like Kaminga or uh, what's his name, Barnes. And Kaminga next to Jonathan Isaac might might start to get a little repetitive yeah so that'll be interesting to see or because scotty barnes you know he's he's kind of a guy that at least from what i've seen and heard is best you know put the ball in his hands and let him make plays you know he'll also bring good defense but uh yeah that that's about it and then number eight uh I mean, who you knows? Maybe if Keon Johnson's there, they take a chance on him, or the Folk Knight guy from UConn, who apparently is just three level score out of this world athletic, but, you know, maybe a little bit of a swing at the fences. But for a team like Orlando, again, they can afford to swing for the fences. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it in NBA news for, for uh, what I've missed out on uh so yeah i hope you enjoyed it and uh peace out